Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to handle odd type stock items. And what I mean by that is in some cases we have certain pieces of stock and they change in variety. There's many different attributes to them. They may change in a different dimension that we normally keep in stock. So it varies from unit to unit. So here's an example. This is a cylinder. And, you know, again, ordinarily you just make this a single SKU and you define it in your SKU and that would be pretty easy to handle. But what if the item was seven feet long? Okay, still, you know, you could say, all right, well, this is a cylinder that's seven feet long and I'm going to sell so many of them to my customer. It's well described. Still no problem. But what if I now am buying different ones and they're different varying lengths? Seven foot, five foot could be many different variations between the two or below or above in terms of length. So the diameter, for example, is the same. Maybe the weight, maybe some other things are the same, but maybe some things aren't. And then on top of it, maybe I barcode those because there are varying pieces of information that are very critical for me to track, for example, maybe a die lot, maybe some sort of uh, metal characteristic that's very important for me to keep track of. So to do that, we can't have a single SKU here and be able to define not only the potential serial number characteristics and also length, because that would be too cumbersome. And as I said before, you know, we could have seven foot, we could have many different lengths below seven foot, below five foot in between. So creating a skew for this would be very difficult. Having said that, what do we do with the inventory? In other words, what do we track our base inventory measure? So we don't necessarily want to say this is just quantity one because how we charge the customer maybe is very related to the length. So here's a solution that'll help you get through this and give you the ability to track it clearly, both from the ordering process of your vendor over to when you go to sell it from the customer. The customer wants a specific type of unit. They maybe want a specific length with specific characteristics. So let me show you that now. The first thing we're gonna do is we'll create a purchase receipt. Of course, we can create a purchase order, but in this case, we're gonna jump right to the purchase receipt about how we get this stock into our system so that we can clearly identify it. So we'll click plus here and create a new one. We'll select our vendor. We'll add a roll of material. And how we order it from the vendor could be square feet, even though we're gonna track this in terms of lengths. So this particular item we know is a given width, and maybe that width is 15 feet wide. So the square footage is easy, but we're going to order from the vendor because the vendor only knows square footage. We're going to order maybe 2,000 square feet of it. Now, before we go and receive this, we're going to break it up because what the vendor is now giving us, what we're receiving, is not just a simple item of 2,000 square feet. It's a number of rolls of material. So we'll go into line details and our base measure here is lineal feet. We bought it in square foot. So we bought it at 2000 square feet, but our base measure is lineal feet. So Acumatica, we have a conversion in there by 15. It's converted it to 133, but we have multiple rolls here. So what we'll do is we'll define the first roll and we'll say the first roll is 25 feet. And then we'll give it whatever our characteristics are. So maybe our die lot is something along that line. That's the number that the vendor has given us. Keep track of it. And maybe there's even another manufacturing number. Maybe there's a, a heat number, some sort of manufacturing values that are important to us, not only to track internally, but also that our customers want. They want this particular type of uh, material and they can only see it in this certain threshold. 
So again, we can have as many fields here as we want. You could track it that way. And as I said before, we're going to be tracking additional rolls. So this is the first roll. It's 25 feet in length. We got another one that's 50 feet. We'll click on 50. We'll type in 50 and we'll click generate. Now we have our second one. If we go down to it, we could put in the different values there. We can also apply from the first. That'll pull that information in so we don't have to type everything in. But maybe there's a different value here. So we can do that. Maybe there's different characteristics. Again, we're using miscellaneous, but we can certainly do that any way we'd like. Put in other data. And then the remainder could be this 58.33. We'll click Generate. And that's what we have there. We'll apply the attributes again. We'll make a couple of adjustments here. Click OK here. And we'll bring this into inventory. You'll notice Acumatica is rounding, right? So it's not 2,000 square feet anymore. Just so happens the total measure and the divide by is a little bit off. There's additional decimal places. So this is what we're rounding up to. So you can balance that yourself. And certainly you can adjust when the vendor's invoice comes in. So now when we go to sell, We have our customer. We probably have our order already. Otherwise, we wouldn't have ordered it in the first place. But we'll create the order together. We'll add our line item. Customer's buying. And we know the customer needs, for example, about 133 lineal feet. And now we have this item lot serial search. This allows us to go in. We pick the class, the type of lot. And that's what you see here. You see all of the different roles here and their designated quantities. So if I check these, I'm adding them all in. But additionally, this gives us the ability for the customer to select what they want. So you have all these variables here. There might be a specific die lot the customer's reordering. There may be some specifications that they need. Electronic manufacturers go through this all the time. They need certain materials that are of a certain ohm or resistance, a certain way they're, they're putting together electronic boards. Metal manufacturers need this. You know, they might need a certain hardened value that the vendor is providing when they sell this uh, metal equipment. But you have the ability to select it. You can click on any column and search for what you're looking for. You use a search string up here. And you can add any number of characteristics. We talked about it earlier. We only had three, but you can add as many as you'd like. So now we can add and close this. And now we're able to ship this material to the customer. We've dedicated the exact material we want. Everything's barcoded. And we can pull it properly from stock and keep track of it. Additionally, We've created a listing screen that allows you to see all of the different materials that you have. And you could see their lens. So this is a good screen to search through all of these roles, find what you're looking for, get specific pieces of information. This is an internal Acumatica unique identifier, a unique lot number that identifies every single role that we have. You can see ours at the top. You can see the receive date here. We also created a couple of tables here, pivot tables, that allow you to see what you've received on certain days. So we received three lots on the 15th. Click on it, you can see it. If you want to see all of the material that you've received at the same die lot, you can filter by here, find the one you're looking for, and then see all of the roles you have in that specific die lot. And it goes on and on. Any additional fields you need to keep track of, you can have them displayed here. So that's handling stock of different types of characteristics and different measures. Where it's not all the same, you can't have all the same skew. 
And that's something that we do here at Cloud9 ERP Solutions. So if you have any questions about that or anything else related to ERP or Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.